the Emerald Ash Borer. He chews through the bark of the toughest crime family trees, rooting out villains that even the Civilian Conservation Corps can't cut down, the Emerald Ash Borer. With his faithful Filipino valet Castro, Rit Breed, crusading publisher, outwits criminal masterminds, placing himself in peril so that gangsters and lawbreakers may feel the pinch of justice in the jaws of the Emerald Ash Borer. Crawl with Rit Breed into another thorny adventure. The Emerald Ash Borer flies again. Hurry, Castro, we're out to smash a pinball gambling racket. The Sapphire Studebaker, notorious vehicle of the Emerald Ash Borer, slips into a garage door in a seemingly abandoned building. In actuality, this building is the gallery of the Emerald Ash Borer, where he stores his crime-fighting equipment. It also shares a wall with Rit Breed's apartment. Castro returns to his laboratory to work on a new type of gas for his employer's gas gun, while Rit Breed passes into a narrow hallway. Entering his apartment through a sliding panel in the back of his wardrobe, Breed discovers... Falk Ziljan, what are you doing in my bedroom? I'm bringing the killer of Lemmy Jolson to justice. I know who you are, Breed. That's right. To average citizens, I'm Rip Breed, crusading newspaper publisher. To the underworld, I'm known as the Emerald Ash Borer. Is that a job description? It's an insect with iridescent green wing covers. An insidious invasive species. I suppose it's poisonous or has a wicked stinger? No, but since it has few local predators in North America, it devastates ash trees. Ah. Plays hell on tree farms. I can imagine. If you have a wooded estate, total nightmare. They're native to Northeast Asia. Huh. Pupation generally takes place in the spring after- I don't really need to know. Right, sorry, it's just, it's really important to raise awareness about them. Why did you do it, Breed? I know you're a do-gooder in spite of your reputation as a criminal, but why would you kill a promising cub reporter in cold blood? Or that kid, Petey Westlaw, who was organizing an innocent fundraiser for the National Rifle Manufacturers Association? I didn't kill either of them. I shot them with my gas gun. It sounded exactly like a Colt M1911. Castro worked hard so the gas gun would mimic the sound of a regular pistol. Hoodlums wouldn't be intimidated if they knew I was only armed with a gas that knocks them out for an hour or two. But everybody knows you use a gas gun. They've all heard stories. Why are they still scared? Half of them think I'm a walking gas chamber, so they confess and snitch on each other. The other half know they'll wake up in jail and get shanked a few days later on the assumption that they snitched. Either way, you need to dial back your gas gun. Lemmy Jolson died. I watched when they buried him. He's alive. It's all part of the plan. My assistant Castro dug him up the next day. We're keeping him and the boy tied up in an abandoned warehouse. All these abandoned warehouses. They keep saying the real estate market's going to bounce back in Parabellum City, but there's so much unused space. We overdeveloped. Simple as that. I'm hoping with Bryson on the city council, he'll enact some policies to discourage that trend. Why are you kidnapping a reporter, though? I'm just holding him while the other pieces of my plan fall into place. You could have explained the situation to Jolson. If you need him to keep quiet, he'd probably go along with it. I can't take that chance. Listen to this wire recording I made of Bim Farlow and his lieutenant. I think it'll make everything clear. They'll have to hand in their report by the day after tomorrow at the latest, or it won't be passed at this meeting. Ain't that what you want? Of course it is. But if we don't raise the cash, then they will turn in the favorable report. And the thing will be railroaded through by the birds that want to close the session and get started on the summer vacation. Yeah, I see. The pressure of the newspapers will make them pass the thing unless we raise the cash to block it. So, there you have it. They're talking about bills and reports and meetings. I need more context. There's a bill before the state legislature to legalize betting at racetracks again. Once there's a precedent, they'll legalize casinos, the numbers racket, slot machines, even pinball machines in malt shops. Okay, so those two guys you recorded are lobbying legislators. I think that's legal. It's bribery. Yeah, they call it campaign contributions, and somehow that makes it legal. I'm with you. It ought to be illegal. But you should have something bigger if you're going to upset innocent people's lives. Well, the amount they're donating exceeds the legal limit. Ah, uh, okay. It's a legit crime. Your plan to prevent illegal campaign contributions requires gassing and kidnapping a man and a child? Let me lay out the whole plan. First, I need to... will make the bookmakers turn on each other, and they'll implicate Alderman Grappelli and Delegate Simmons. 
I know, it's a lot to take in. I'm not sure where to start. No, I do know. You can omit the pipe bomb at the pinball factory. That's the cornerstone of the whole plan. And including the two I knew about, you've kidnapped a total of seven people so far and faked their deaths. None of them are even indirectly connected to the criminals you want to take down. But all necessary. You stole many from an auto mechanic who Farlow shakes down as part of his protection racket. Correct. Farlow threatens to break the guy's elbows because he doesn't have that week's payment. Then you plant the stolen money in Farlow's office, framing him for the crime he was in the process of committing. Wrong. It was the wife's elbows that he threatened. Otherwise correct. You had an elderly widow evicted so she would plead with a representative at her bank, thereby distracting the banker while you sneaked in to look at the accounts of some suspects? That was Castro's idea. He's not just a great chemist and a skilled driver, he's an idea man. You should hire more idea men to workshop your plans before you put them in action. I don't think that's at all- Here's an idea. Why do you have a blue car? Why not keep the emerald green motif consistent? I prefer a diverse color palette. And there's the gemstone motif, emerald, sapphire. Do you get promotional money from the Studebaker company? I tried, but they weren't interested, especially since the emerald ash borer has a carefully cultivated reputation as a criminal. Say, how did you figure out I was writ breed anyway? Lemmy Jolson said the emerald ash borer is wealthy playboy and pub, and then he passed out. I roughed up dozens of pub owners around the city, even though none of them are what you'd call wealthy. Later, I figured out he was trying to say publisher. Plus, I realized the Emerald Ash Borer is assisted by his faithful Filipino valet Castro, and Rit Breed has a faithful Filipino valet named Castro. I don't know why your enemies haven't noticed that yet. Damn it! I knew I forgot something. He needs a hero name. And maybe something other than a chauffeur's uniform when he's in action? Just a minute, I'll summon him. Castro, will you come to my bedroom for a minute? Don't be alarmed by the man who's in here. He's giving me notes on my plan for the pinball gambling bribery racket operation. Yes, Mr. Ritt. If you don't mind, I'm going to dash over to my library for half a minute to retrieve the bug encyclopedia. I'll look up some possible hero nicknames for Castro. By all means. Good evening, Mr. Ziljan. I told Breed your chauffeur's uniform with a mask isn't effective at hiding your true identity. He's off looking at a bug book to give you a new name. I must speak quickly then. Do you know any heroes looking to hire a valet or assistant? Not off the top of my head. I would be willing to start as a cook or chauffeur if there was room for advancement. I have degrees in chemical engineering and biotech, specializing in fermentation and virology. I spent four years on the stock car racing circuit. That sounds really... I won't have positive references from my current employer, but I think once I turn state's evidence, any prospective employers will take that into consideration. Wow, I had no idea. Just please keep me in mind if you hear of anything. With all their secrecy, it's not like heroes can advertise for openings in the Daily Parabellum. Maybe check with Lamont Cranford? I interviewed for him, but I had to turn down the position. His personal assistant, Largo Main, made it clear she doesn't want any other assistants or servants coming between Lamont and her. I don't want to get on her bad side. They say she practices witchcraft. Yikes. I found a good one. Castro, what do you think of Six Spotted Tiger Beetle for your hero nickname? What? You've already decided, but you're going to pretend I have some choice in the matter. Then you'll become insufferable if I don't go along with it. What? No, wait, don't decide yet. Here's the kicker. The Latin name for it is Cicendula Sexcatata. Hands in the air, heroes. We got you surrounded. The queen pin of crime sends her love. She doesn't like you styming her pinball gambling racket. Time up, boys. I'm just a newspaper publisher. What do you want with me? I even wrote an editorial supporting Stifle the bill. it. We know you're the emerald ash borer. And that widow you plan to get evicted happens to be my mother. How did you find my secret identity? Kind of a coincidence that Rit Breed and the emerald ash borer both got a faithful Filipino valet named Castro. I tried to tell you. And you, Ziljan, there's eight of us here who got the drop on you, so don't try your magic trick. Well, Breed, you have at least one thing in common with your namesake insect, the Emerald Ash Borer. You're surrounded by ash holes. I thought you were going to say I was boring. I get that a lot. Don't ever neglect the cold. At the very first sign of a cold, get after it immediately with the faster help of sparkling, uh, sparkling, uh, 
What's the name? Fred Allen, remember? No, no, no. <laughs> the name of the... I'm awfully sorry. That eagle has upset me. The, I, I can't remember the name of what it is that helps fight cold faster. It slipped my mind. Well, it'll come to you. Go ahead, Harry. Well, yes, yes, of course. Ladies and gentlemen, this famous product acts very quickly. Yet it's exceptionally gentle. And since the progress of a cold is very fast, the greater speed of, uh, of what it is I'm talking about is especially important in fighting your cold. And that's not all. This, uh, the name will come to me in a minute. It also helps nature counteract the acidity that so often accompanies a cold. And ladies and gentlemen, you can check these facts with your own doctor. You'd better check the name, too, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, Fred, you know what I'm talking about. Why, don't certainly, you? Harry. You're talking about America's outstanding saline laxative. That's it, Fred. And the name is. The name is, uh, uh, so many physicians recommend it. Yes, yes. And it helps fight cold faster. But what is the name? Well, here's a pretty to do. Wait, Harry. There must be somebody around here who knows. If there is, would you uh, please tell us uh, confidentially? Sal That's it. Sal Hepatica. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Invasion of the Emerald Ash Borer, Episode 9 of This Gun in My Hand, was made by Rob North. Rate and review this wherever you can. Go to thisgunandmyhand.blogspot.com for credits, details on how to subscribe, and to buy my books. My short story collection, Little Heist in the Big Woods and Other Revisionist Atrocities, is for sale in PDF format. What's the best insecticide to eliminate Cacendula sexcatata? This gun in my hand. These copyrighted dramas originate in the studios of WXYZ Detroit. All characters, names, places, and incidents are fictitious. This is the Blue Network.